Hello everybody that does it here. Welcome to Baby Blue build episode 2. Today I'm going to start actual building process. Would be probably the most laborious part of the build besides maybe plumbing itself. I will go in to install monoblock from AK that I got a few days ago on Gigabyte Designates X399 motherboard. It's a support, it looks like it will be quite a lot of work as it has a backplate which needs to be removed as well. So there will be a lot of working with the screwdriver today and uh, obviously I probably need to put a thread reaper on the motherboard as well before installing monoblock. So before we're going into actual process and I'm going to install it and you know i show you how I do it, although I never had experience with Thread Reaper before, so it will be first time experience. So we we'll do it together. About the motherboard, so why I decide to go with the Designare motherboard? There's a few things. One of them is um, just simply the looks. I'm really tired of all this bullshit and flashy designs and uh, too much colors on the current motherboard, so I'm trying to be a little bit more conservative for my personal taste. So you can see this board is pretty much black and silver, it can go any color else you want to add, like any highlights, you want to go like blue build, it's fine, you want to go red build, it's still fine, you want to do orange, whatever, whatever you want. There's a, there's a really good choice being neutral not flashy design that allows you to go with whatever you want. I probably will stay with very calm, not very flashy scheme, but nevertheless, it just for if anybody else will try to do similar build, I think this is one of the best looking motherboards for the for the modding purposes, like such as water cooling and stuff like this. There's a couple other things why I selected this mobo. Well, first of all, it's one of the top of the motherboards on the market specifically from Gigabyte. This has a lot of features that I'm personally interested. Unlike many other models, I actually have uh, three places where I can put M.2 drives. So there's one located here, second is here, and the third is somewhere there. It also includes heat sinks, so I don't need to buy any additional heat sinks. They're not that expensive, like 20 bucks or so, but nevertheless, you know, sinks adds up. This is my personal build, nothing is really sponsored here. I'm paying out of my pocket and uh, I'm watching my interests here too. So we have all these heat sinks, which I like. Also, there is the same color scheme and design, all silver, it's pretty good. Also, this board allows to do RAID. Just for the data protection purposes, I'm not saying that Ray they replace backups and things like this, but I usually have main drive run as a RAID 1. So basically I mirror one drive to other. So if one drive will die, I just have exact copy on another one. So that's usually the way I'm going to, and I can put M.2 drives right on the motherboard and be happy with that. Very discreet and compact type of design. And as you know, I have a compact case too. I probably still have to install a couple high capacity traditional hard drives because video files such as I'm filming right now, they're pretty big. I'm not even talking about going into 4K. Another thing that I want to try, um, on the recent motherboards, uh, Gigabyte has those uh, connectors which is gold plated and specifically designed to use for audio equipment. I have a ODAC as that I use to listen music and play games and do videos. So I just would like to try to see if there will be <laughs> any noticeable difference, or at least I will feel good about it. So I'm going to connect ODAC on the specified ports. It has built-in Wi-Fi. You can put computer where you want. I usually have a hard line going to PC, but maybe I will try wireless uh, this time around. Traditionally for 299 or 399, doesn't matter, AMD, Intel, uh, the big banks for memories, I have a DDR4 ROM, I, I using currently in my current build, so I just move that Corsair dominators here, so I have all 8 band populated, 64 gig, would be pretty decent together with this 40 and uh, Threadripper CPU. I think this will be quite a beast of computer. So anyways, that's uh, basically the reasons why I chose this motherboard. There's a couple other nice features I forgot to mention that has uh, special headers for pumps. 
this will be not powerful for my personal setup. I'm going to go probably 2D5 as usual. So it's not good enough, but somebody who runs DDC type of pump one or even two will just have a couple of headers that will be able to handle it. Right on the motherboard, there's a connectors for thermal probes. So again, I can use a thermal probes that I can go directly to motherboard. It's another thing, which is nice. I may be using Aqua IR, then it became irrelevant, but nevertheless, it's an option that is there. And maybe I go this route, maybe other route. Now, about the installation itself, why I said this probably will be quite an undertaking. Because I'm using monoblock, it's not only cooling CPU, like traditional CPU block, but it also will be cooling those MOSFETs, which is connected to those MOSFETs. And what you get from AK, you essentially get monoblocks that cover CPU in this MOSFET, but here you get the passive heat sinks that you need to replace existing heat sinks, right? So, it could be easy to install CPU itself because you have a big cutout in this uh, nice cover on the back of the motherboard, but unfortunately the screws for those heat sinks, they behind this cover. So it means that to start the process, I have to unscrew more stuff and remove this uh, shield basically first. And after that, I will I will be able to remove heat sinks and all this um, passive cooling stuff so I can install monoblock on top of it, right? So a little bit more hassle. I'm not saying it is terribly hard, but nevertheless, it's a little bit more work that I have to deal with here, right? All right, so let me open brand new monoblock. Just tell you what we're talking about here. So this is a monoblock, as I said. This is a CPU portion, and there's the other portion that covers this heat sink on top. For the second heat sink, we have this little aluminum heat sink that uh, will be replacing it. All right, so I'll start with removing this guard or panel, whatever it's called, uh, because in order to remove those two heat sinks that we discussed before, there's a one screw from MOSFET is right there, but the other one is somewhere, somewhere here, and there's two more screws for the one which is next to IO panel. All right, so have to take this out and uh, we'll see what is actually under it. Luckily not too many screws needs to be taken. Alright, let's see. No thermal pods, nothing. It's just some insulating film on the bottom. So not big deal. That was relatively painless. So now, this is screw is normal, this is screw is not, I need a flat screwdriver here, and this one I'm not even sure, I think those two, <coughs> that's the ones that holds as a heat sink. Alrighty. Mm. Actually I can't remove this one because this shield thing is prevent me from doing so. So I guess we'll go back and see how we can remove that thing. Lots of little screws. Now it should come out. Yep, everything fell off already. As you can see, You can see this was good contact. Thermal pass kind of crappy because it broke off. So it's not uh, the highest grade ones. And um, what we're missing, they have kind of active type of cooling with a little fan attached to this heat sink. And now we will be going to replace it with completely passive EK. K heat sink somewhere here. So I hope 
it will not it will be sufficient essentially for our purposes because obviously active heat sink a little bit more effective i guess the word but i'll see anyways let's clean all these remaining thermal parts first before we can go with installation all right i put new lenses so we can get a little bit close up because otherwise i don't think you can see it well enough so here we have a two millimeter thermal part going on still trying to trim it properly so it goes like that and we have this heat sink going on top of it so that's how it works that's a little bit damaged here i don't know if you can see it's a scratch you have a seal of stuff coming out that's because uh, ikea didn't do really good packaging so we have uh, this zip lock that was this heat thing on and the block itself so no padding nothing one thing hit other and we get scratched so luckily the block itself seems okay probably it was scratched by the screws or something like this so you can see it's kind of enough sharp objects sticking around so yeah not the best packaging on the case side but well it's minor i probably can touch it up with a marker and you can't really see it later when installed and covered with dust still a little bit have a Mm, anxiety if you will uh, or concern that we have a, such a big heat sink before with the active fan and now we have a, such a little thingy but um, I hope it will be still sufficient to cool this MOSFET enough right because here we have water cooling so perfect cooling here we have maybe a little bit running hot but uh, as I said that I assume that they know what they're doing it shouldn't be an issue although Ah, you know what I mean. All right, first step is done. This little thing is now in place. Hold it with two screws. Use a Sharpie to cut excessive servo parts. You still can see a little bit, but it's not very much visible, so not big deal. So this part is done. We'll have to install shield back and um, and we can proceed with the main installation of the CPU itself and the actual the block. So that was easy part, a little bit warm up. Always was curious about this overkill packaging from AMD, so really big box. So what we have here is a tool. You probably already saw it hundred times, but always cool to do it yourself. Labels. Okay. This is one expensive piece of hardware. Well, interesting. Alrighty, let's follow instructions. Close. One, two, three. Open. Three, two, one. Ha ha ha. It's good to read sometimes. Okay. This installation mechanism, I would say it's pretty shitty, to be honest. Well, I hope I do it right. There are no way in hell to figure out if CPU is sitting right or not right, because it's basically hidden, but uh, I think it's all right. So let's see. Okay, CPU is in and we're almost ready. This how our end result is supposed to look. 
goes here. I like that this is not shiny because this is a matte and the plating is also kind of matte. It's pretty cool. All right. Things start getting together a little bit. I want to see what kind of LED is there. And maybe I either remove it or maybe replace it with something else. Something maybe better. Man, removing two screws wasn't easy at all. And I want to warn you, this one is a little a surface screw, but this one is long. So this is uh, something that part of the seal for water block. So I wouldn't recommend to take it out <laughs> with the liquid in. All right, so what we have here is the simplest um, waterproof basic LED 12 volt RGB. So there's a good clearance of couple millimeters. So if you want to put something else, for example, it could be individually addressed LED or longer lead than this one because this is pretty short one two six right so easily can be put nine leds so it will be a little bit better distribution of light so something that can be improved and um, yeah i'll think about this later but can be maybe white can look good or maybe rgb could be look good i don't know interesting but I'll think about it let's continue with installation itself I think I leave it aside for now it's not big deal one screw without liquid wouldn't make much difference this is block pretty huge and it's look very much like little GPU block yeah that's interesting and uh, also, we have this logo thingy. Right. Here you go. Yeah. Okay. Looks good so far. And final step. We're just simply putting monoblock aligning screws under it on the mounting post just put my elbow into the thermal grease <laughs> so I have to clean it and we need to screw all those four screws in place and when it's done two more screws over here I'm not going to do any other uh, morning today it's getting pretty late here so I'll leave stuff till next week and uh, actually my next step will be more to deal with cables because case is so small that it's good to take care about all cabling first before we're going for any other stuff so it seems like one screw is not really going well I don't want to strip any threads unnecessary. I need to look at more carefully. Anyways, that's basically what we're talking about and we'll look into all these custom cablings next week. I spoke too early to say bye because I also have to put this back plate back which I show you right there. Not big deal, just a few screws, but because of the monoblock installation, I lost one pole. So one side of this back plate, it's pretty rigid, so I don't think it's much of the problem, but the corner basically is not attached. And there is a little rubber post on this area, which prevents it to be completely bent, but it's basically, it's flimsy because EK threading is different from the pole threading, so no way to put it in. Not biggie, but they didn't think it through. Maybe it's not the case for Gaming 7, as they just figured out the Gaming 7 and Designer has the same layout, so they can use a monoblock for both motherboards, but it's a little bit of imperfection. And that's how the whole thing looks. I think pretty decent, everything in line with the 
the same gray black color scheme which I'm pretty happy with and uh, we'll figure out what I to do a little bit later with this LED thingy but other than that it's good it's a big step to moving forward so hopefully maybe a couple more episodes and uh, we'll figure this, this thing out I'll see you later